Welcome back to Lab Unit 2, and this video is going to talk about the catalase test. This test is a differential test, which means we are going to be able to differentiate organisms based on whether or not they have something or can do something. So with differential media and differential tests, most things can grow or survive. They're just going to behave differently. So with the catalase test, what we're looking to see is does an organism have a specific enzyme? Catalase. Remember, you can identify an enzyme because the last three letters of the name are typically ACE, A-S-E. So catalase is the enzyme that we are looking for. And this enzyme is important because it can be used to break down hydrogen peroxide. If you think back to lecture, uh, you may recall that hydrogen peroxide is a toxic uh, form of uh, oxygen. Sorry, my brain's still working a little slow this morning. Hydrogen peroxide is a toxic form, um, a toxic molecule that can damage or kill cells. But it is often a byproduct or an intermediate in metabolism. So if a cell has to create hydrogen peroxide for another purpose, that cell has to have a way to deal with that toxic molecule, right? It's not going to make something that's going to kill it. So one way that bacteria can um, tolerate or handle hydrogen peroxide when it's formed in the cell is by having the enzyme catalase. Because as you can see um, in this third bullet, hydrogen peroxide is going to be converted or broken down to water and gaseous oxygen if the enzyme catalase is present. And water is something that bacteria can easily handle, as is oxygen. But let me clarify that a little bit. We've talked about some organisms are aerobic and can grow in the presence of oxygen, and others are anaerobic and can't handle oxygen at all. So anaerobic organisms would not have catalase because they wouldn't be able to tolerate the oxygen here that's made. But a lot of aerobic organisms that can handle oxygen will have catalase because, again, it's a way for them to deal with hydrogen peroxide, which is often made during metabolism. So aerobic organisms are able to use the enzyme catalase. So a lot of you may be familiar with hydrogen peroxide. A lot of times if you get like a minor flesh wound, people will pour hydrogen peroxide on it because it doesn't sting, like rubbing alcohol. However, that's not always the best course of action, especially if it's a very shallow, like I said, surface wound, because a lot of the organisms at the surface of our skin or right under our skin are able to deal with oxygen, so they will have catalase. So when you add a tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide to your wound, they're actually breaking it down. That's why you see those bubbles. A lot of people get comfort and gratification from those bubbles because you think that's the bacteria dying. It's really not. It's them breaking down that peroxide so that they can continue to survive. Now, that doesn't mean peroxide isn't useful. You need a certain concentration and a certain amount of it to essentially overwhelm um, the bacteria. So it can still be good, but rubbing alcohol is going to be your best plan, especially if it's, like I said, a very minor flesh wound. So, like I mentioned, the catalase enzyme can break down hydrogen peroxide into water and gaseous oxygen. So, to determine if an organism has catalase, all you have to do is add hydrogen peroxide to the cells. When you, um, so what you can see here is you can put just a little loop full of bacteria, for instance, on a microscope slide, and then you just add a couple drops of hydrogen peroxide, and you're either going to observe bubbles or you will observe no bubbles. If bubbles occur, then the organism has the enzyme catalase. If no bubbles form, then the organism does not have catalase. So with this unit and unit three, when we get there, 
What's going to be really important is that you know the difference between the words observation, results, and interpretation. The observation is what you can physically see. We cannot see the enzyme catalase, right? It's microscopic. We can't see that. But we can see bubbles, or we can see an absence of bubbles. So with this test, the observation you will record or look for are bubbles or no bubbles. If bubbles occur, then this is a positive result. If there are no bubbles, it's a negative result. Think of it kind of as positive meaning yes. Yes, the organism has catalase. Yes, there are bubbles. Okay, so when you see bubbles, it's a positive reaction, positive result. When there are no bubbles, that means there's not catalase, so your result is negative. Now, the interpretation is the so what. So what does it mean that I observed bubbles? So what does it mean that it's a positive result? Because notice on this slide, with just my observation and just my results, you have no idea that catalase is even a thought, right? All you know from bubbles and positive is that bubbles formed and it's a positive reaction. So the interpretation is where you're telling somebody what those bubbles mean what a positive result means. So for your interpretation, you always go back to the purpose of the test. The purpose of this test was to determine if an organism has catalase. So it's in the interpretation that you're going to tell me the organism has catalase or the organism does not have catalase. So remember, if you observed bubbles, that's a positive reaction. So your so what or your interpretation is the organism has catalase. You can even go one step further and say, you know, the organism has catalase, so it can break down hydrogen peroxide. If we observed no bubbles and we had a negative result, the interpretation is the organism does not have catalase, so it cannot break down hydrogen peroxide. So make sure you give yourself some time to really understand the difference between observation, result, and interpretation. The catalase test is important because it does help us to identify which group the unknown organism is in. The staphylococci do have catalase, so let me go back to that real quick, and the streptococci do not have catalase. So you wouldn't put this in your interpretation, but it's just so you know, for our unknown number two, catalase test is done first because it allows us to know if we're dealing with a staphylococci or a member of the streptococci group. So the catalase test is the first thing you do in lab for unit two. So as I just mentioned, the staphylococci, oops, sorry, the staphylococci do have the enzyme catalase. And one of the heavy hitter pathogens that we'll be studying both in lecture and lab is Staphylococcus aureus. This organism naturally produces a pigment. It's more like a, a yellow gold color. And you may have noticed that in lab unit one when we were looking at colonies on an auger plate. And you can see it here on this blood auger plate some strains of Staphylococcus aureus produce that pigment. Not all of them do. So as you can see on the right side of this plate, there is no pigment. Well, it turns out that the strains of Staphylococcus aureus that are pigmented are even further protected from the effects of hydrogen peroxide. So we actually consider the pigment of Staphylococcus aureus to be an additional virulence factor. Because remember, virulence factors are like little weapons or strategies the organism uses to survive. So in my brain, I just kind of envision the yellow gold pigment as like a shield around the colony, helping protect it from things like hydrogen peroxide. All right, y'all, that's the end of our discussion on the catalase test. Let me know if you have any questions.